One of the biggest questions that we get in our office in Pasadena is, when should I retire? And I tell people that choosing a retirement date is part science and part art. So what I mean by that is we can tell you the science part of it. We can tell you what's going to give you a higher retirement benefit, make your money better, or um, you know, maybe give you some sort of uh, advantage in some way. But when it really comes down to it, if you're eligible to retire and you have a special day on your, on your heart and you really want to retire on that date, it's fine. You, it's your retirement date. You get to choose it. So we just want to show you what you can do to maybe choose a retirement date that might give you a better advantage. Um, we know that the older you are when you retire, the better your retirement check is going to look. So, of course, we're going to look at your age. We're going to look at your birthday. We're also going to look at uh, how many full years of service credit do you have when you retire. Maybe you just want to work up to the time you have 25 years. So that's where it's really important to make sure you work until you have those 25 years in. Don't work until you have 24 years and 11 months because you won't get your full medical subsidy. We only look at the full years of service credit when it comes to the insurance subsidy. Uh, what can you tell me about March 31st? Do you know why March 31st is our, our most popular retirement date? The COLA, yes, the COLA. And it is the deadline to retire by in order to receive the April 1st COLA. So the COLA benefit, even if you were to retire in, say, January or, or the previous December, if there's a COLA benefit to give, you'll still get it. But a lot of people like to work all the way up to that COLA deadline and retire. And that means their very first retirement check is going to include that COLA raise, again, if there's been inflation. So it's kind of really psychological. There's, you know, if there's a COLA benefit to get, you're still going to get it if, if you've retired the previous November. It's just... You know, some people like to work all the way up to the 31st and get um, of March and get that COLA benefit right away. Um, in terms of pay flow, we talk about retiring the second half of the month. And that means that if you retire in the first half of the month, there's going to be a bigger gap between your last county check and your first retirement check. So in order to make that as small of a gap as possible, you probably want to work into the second half of the month. The further into the second half of the month you work, the more of a county check, the bigger the county check you'll receive while you're waiting for that first retirement check. Um, keep in mind that typically it could take anywhere between 30 and 60 days after you retire to receive your first retirement check. So we always recommend that you have some money saved up just to hold you over during that period. You can retire the first day of uh, your work week off. So what is the first day of your weekend? For me, it's, it's Saturday, right? But for some of you, maybe you work different kinds of hours. Uh, some people get Sunday and Monday off. Other people get, you know, Tuesdays and Thursdays or, or something like that. Um, what we found in the new payroll system is that you don't get paid for the days that you are not scheduled to work. So if I'm not scheduled to work on Saturday and Sunday, then I might want to consider retiring on the first of those two days, Saturday for me. Because Lacero will pay you every single day of the week, but the county only pays you for the days of the week that you are scheduled to work. I actually have an RDO. How many of you have an RDO, a regular day off? If you have a regular day off that kind of... Uh, butts up against your, uh, your weekend, again, retire the first day off, even if it is your RDO. So for me, if it happens to be the week that I was supposed to be off on my RDO, which is a Friday, I might retire on that Friday. That means Lacero will pay me for Friday, Saturday, Sunday, the rest of my life. The county will pay me Monday through Thursday, the days that I was actually scheduled to work. Um, in some cases, we want you to think about your cash flow. Remember that there could be potentially a gap between the time you retire and the time you receive your first retirement check. So keep that in mind. By retiring towards the second half of the month, that's going to help, um, help close that gap for you. And then finally, we have what we call tax deferral considerations. And basically what that means is that you have, um, you're earning taxable income throughout the year. Um, if you go to retire towards the end of the year and you get that big termination paycheck that is taxable, it could be big enough to put you into a new tax bracket. 
Again, we don't give financial advice or tax advice, but we just want you to be aware that that could potentially happen to you. One of the ways that you can uh, mitigate that, that termination pay affecting your taxes is by putting it over into your horizons plan. You need to talk to Great West if you're interested in doing something like that. They have a form that you need to fill out, and basically you're allowed to shelter some of that money from taxes, and it also does not impact your taxes that year either. Um, you're allowed to put into your Horizons plan whatever the taxable limit is for that year. So the limit for this year, if you happen to be within three years of your normal retirement age, is $33,000. But let's say hypothetically you've been putting in money all year long, and now you get to the end of the year and now you have this big, big, huge taxable check, and you want to try to shelter it into your Horizons plan, well, you, could have been, you would have been able to shelter more into it if you decided to retire the following year, early in the year, because now you haven't chipped away at that $33,000 limit. You're allowed to put in that maximum limit, but it also is offset by whatever you've already put in and whatever the county has put in as well. But for more information, we recommend that you talk to Great West about that. They administer that plan. Okay. So let's go ahead and talk about... Um, Choosing a retirement date based on your age. Um, plan A members earn age credit all the way up to age 62. After that, we don't count your birthdays anymore. <laughs> right? For our plan A, uh, B, C, D, and E, we count your birthdays all the way up to 65. And um, for our plan A, B, C, and D members, we actually count not only your birthdays, but your quarter birthdays as well. And I'll show you on the calendar how that works out. It's actually easier to see when you look at the calendar. But basically, every three months, you're going to see a little increase in your retirement benefit if you retire on or after that date. So let me show you. In fact, uh, go ahead and pull out your calendars. I know that this calendar does not match the calendar that's here up on the, on the screen. But this exercise will work with any calendar year that you set up in this fashion. So if you have January, February, March across the top, and the next row you have April, May, June, third row you have July, August, September, and then on the bottom row you have October, November, December. If you have the calendar set up like this, it doesn't matter if it's 2027 or if it's 2012, this exercise will work for you. And we're going to go through this exercise to help you identify potentially good retirement dates for you. So what was the first thing that we talk about when it comes to your retirement benefit? We talk about your age, right? So uh, the first thing you would want to do is circle your birthday. I don't know what that is, so you, don't, you, gotta, you gotta help me out here. Go ahead and circle your birthday. If you are already over age 65, you don't need to circle the birthday. If you're a Plan A member already over age 62, you don't need to circle your birthday. Now, Plan E members, for you, um, circle your birthday and then kind of hang out for a little bit. All right. Our Plan A, B, C, and D members, if you are under age 62 or 65, um, look at the months that are in the same column as your birth month. I'll give you an example. I was born in September, September 3rd. I'm going to look at the months in the same column. So I'm looking at March, June, September, and December. Those are going to be the months where I get a quarter of a year older. I know the chart, the retirement chart we looked at before, it looks like you only earn age on your birthday. But in actuality, for our plan A, B, C, and D members, you also earn quarter birthday credit as well. So for me, I'm born September 3rd. I would circle September 3rd. I turn a quarter of a year older on December 3rd. I get half a year older on March 3rd. And I get three quarters of a year older on June 3rd. Those are my age quarters. So if you happen to be in plans A, B, C, or D, look at the months that are in the same column as your birth month and circle the same day of the month in those months that line up. Does that make sense? Now, I have a pop quiz for you. What happens if you were born May 31st? You're going to look at August 31st, right? And then November, uh-oh, November only has 30 days. What are we going to do? We're actually going to go to December 1st for that person's age quarter. And then we're going to look at February. Oh, no, February only has 28 days. Uh-oh, 
29 days in, in uh, 2012. Leap year, leap day. So we'll have to go a couple of days into March in order for that individual to earn their age quarter. Okay? Does that make sense? Now, how comfortable do you guys feel in choosing that, that, those birthday quarters? Do you understand how that works? Yeah? Okay. For our contributory plan members, A, B, C, and D, circle or put a star next to March 31st. That's the COLA deadline. If you retire any time after that, you don't get COLA that year. You have to wait till the following year. If you happen to be um, born in the first half of the month like me, you might want to work until the second half of the month. I might actually work till the end of the month because I want to try to get as much of a county check as I can get while I'm waiting for my first retirement check to be issued. If I retire in September when I'm born, the very first opportunity Lacera has to issue me a retirement check is going to be at the end of October, but it could be delayed as late as the end of November, or if I choose a special option, which we'll talk about later, it may be even later than that. Or if I have a legal split, if I get divorced and I have to share part of my retirement benefit with the ex-spouse, then it could be even later than that. So keep that in mind. But if I retire towards the end of September, it means that I get a check at the end of September for the work I've done in the first half. I also get a check from the county on October 15th for the work I did in the second half of September. And then if my first retirement check is issued at the end of October, then I really haven't missed any pay. A nice continuity with payroll, okay? But if I go out in the beginning of the month, on the third on my birthday, I only have two days worth of county pay that the county will pay me on September 30th. And now I haven't worked at all in the second half of the month, so I don't get a paycheck at all in October. I have to really hold my breath for a long time till the end of October to get that first retirement check. And the retirement check will be retroactive all the way back to my retirement date, but it means that I don't have as much county pay to work off of, to live off of during that time. In fact, you know, when I think about the termination pay I might have, I might not even go in September. I might wait until the beginning of the following year to go out because not only can I qualify the, for the COLA benefit that year, but I'll also be able to dump more money into my Horizons plan uh, out of that unused sick and vacation and holiday pay. Right. What do you guys think? Do you feel like you could choose a good retirement date for you? Yeah? Okay, excellent. If you have more questions about this, by all means, come visit Lacera or you know, come talk to us afterwards. We'll be happy to help you out with this one. Okay?